Hello Stampers, Jackie Ballheis from Clomp and Stampers. Today we're going to play with the Poinsettia stamp set and dies. You know, it is beautiful. And the thing I love about this bundle is there's really all different ways that you can make these poinsettias. You can stamp them and color them. You can stamp them and just cut them out. You can use specialty paper. There's a ton of different ways to use them. And that's really what I want to do today is we're going to make four different cards, kind of the same layout, but showing you different ways to work with these beautiful poinsettias. So lots of tips to share, lots of fun products to share with you. And I hope you like the cards we make. So before I flip that camera down, just a quick reminder, if you haven't already subscribed, right down there's a button to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you to those of you that give me thumbs up, show some love, share this channel, and leave me a comment. That's what really helps me be able to bring videos to you with all these quick and easy stamping ideas. Now, one last reminder, everything I share with you today, I will have a blog post that will go along with this video. It will show all the supplies I use. It will give you all the cutting dimensions. I like to call it the card recipe for the projects I have, along with some other information. So if you'd like to make these cards, I make it as easy as I can to have all of that information. And then, and then if you'd like to place a Stampin' Up! order, I would love it if you would pick me to be your Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And over on the website as well, you can request a catalog. So, phew, that was a lot of information. So let's get this camera flipped down and let's get to making these cards today. Hang on one second. Now the products that I'm using today are part of the Poinsettia Place Suite. Remember, Stampin' Up! puts a lot of things together as a suite. You can get the whole shebang, all these coordinating products, or you can purchase everything individually. Now today, we're really gonna just work with the stamp set and the dies. And then I bring in a few other products along the way, um, but I'm not using everything in the suite. So like I said, lots of tips and different ways to use these products. You know, this poinsettia is absolutely beautiful. Oh, I guess I don't need to open it. I've got them on blocks here. Now, like I said, we can stamp in color. We can stamp and just cut out, or we can just cut out. You know, we have like so many options. It's, you know, I'm not really sure where to even begin. So I think what we'll do is we are gonna stamp one. We're using Memento Black. It's a little sticky. And when you're going to stamp these and cut them out, the poinsettia has three different pieces. So you can kind of layer it um, and get a lot of depth and dimension in there. So, and then two different pieces. Oh, that one didn't stamp very good, did it? Two different leaves we can use. Now, when you stamp just on Whisper White, you can go ahead and color this. So we're going to color with Stampin' Blends today. You also could color or stamp these on watercolor paper and do some water coloring or whatever your preferred method of coloring is. So that's one option to use these. So I am not going to take the time in this video to color a um, all of this because I actually have some done for you already, but I'm going to just give you a couple quick little tips here. Um, usually I use the bullet end, but this time I have the brush end just because this is so big. And I personally like to start with light, okay? It's kind of a personal preference. We're gonna take that cap off too. And then we're going to go to our dark. And I think it's just kind of out of habit, but I generally will put the dark along the left-hand side. And then if there's any natural shading, I'll put some dark. We can do some on here. Just add some dark in there. Then I'll come back with the light. And the second time through, I do use that bullet one because I feel like it blends just a little bit better. And I'm just going in and going over those dark marks. And I would go and do each and every petal that way. Now, like I said, you probably don't want to watch me color all of that. So we're going to kind of stop there. And I'm going to go ahead and show you the card I put together. Now, 
I've already put all this together and I've got some other pieces I'm gonna show you how I actually put it together. We're kind of jumping around here, um, but you can see how beautiful that colored. And I also did a couple of the berries. And again, I colored those. And then one of the dies that we have here is this piece. And this one, it's, it doesn't cut out a stamped image, but it cuts out these nice little branch pieces. So we're gonna come back to this one. I just wanted to show you how pretty that colors up. And then we're gonna go, like I said, we're jumping around here. To here is a card that I've stamped the, all those same pieces. So here's two of those little branches. And then we've stamped some leaves. But this time, instead of stamping on that Whisper White, I stamped right onto some Poppy Parade Red. So it kind of makes it easy to just stamp them and then cut them out. We don't have to color. So we're going to go ahead and put this one together for you. So we'll go ahead, use a dimensional in between those layers. Now with the smaller one, I'm going to use a smaller dimensional. Notice how I picked that up. I like to use, doesn't want to come off either. I love I like to use the paper piercing tool, either the old one or the one in the take your pick tool with these smaller, dim smaller dimensionals because they're kind of a pain to pick up. Then we're going to go ahead and we are going to put this onto a piece of crumb cake, but I want to stamp my Merry Christmas on here first. So we are going to just ink this up. I'm sorry, my table is kind of wobbly today. I need to fix the legs on it. We're gonna stamp down towards the bottom of our card there. And then I want to add some, let's see, what should we add on here? Let's go ahead and add some linen thread. This is the same as the one I showed you. So we'll do this. When I use linen thread, I like to kind of estimate about how long I need it to have it long enough to tie a bow. And then I tend to double it. So we're gonna just double that. Um, if you guys follow me, I'm sure you have seen me do this a million times. Um, I think linen thread has kind of become my trademark. I use it so often on my cards, but I like the look of it. It's easy to tie. Um, tie your bow and then just kind of jiggle around here your, your loops and get them the size you want them. I like to make one loop bigger than the other. That way you can kind of see them a little bit better. Get the bow where you want it, and then we'll trim that off. And now we can go ahead and we're going to layer this onto a piece of Poppy Parade Red with our adhesive. Now again, make sure you hop over to my website. I will have the recipe, all the cutting dimensions and everything that I'm using on these cards. Now, like I said, I'm gonna actually show you four different cards and the cutting dimensions are exactly the same. I'm just gonna show you how to do your poinsettia a little bit differently on all of them. So let's do that, and then we're gonna go ahead and we'll stick this down onto our piece of pear pizzazz as well. Okay, so let's stick that down good. Now we're going to take our poinsettia. And you know what, we had a little tiny I cut out this little tiny piece that's one of the dies too to put in the, the center. So let's just put a little, little teeny tiny adhesive on there and we'll stick that in the middle. Okay, then I'm gonna pop this up as well. Now, if you notice, this poinsettia is getting popped up quite a lot, lots of dimensionals here. Um, if you're concerned about mailing this and want to, you could really just glue those adhe those layers right down on each other okay you wouldn't have to pop them up but i don't i really don't think it's going to be too bad now notice how we want to make sure our little bow sticks out there when you stick that on make sure you don't go past your fold so that it fits in the envelope and then for the leaves now again this card was a little bit quicker than the one that i have to share with you where i colored because I didn't have to do all the coloring. You know, sometimes just stamping on that colored cardstock makes life so easy. Let's see. Stick those two leaves on there. And then I do have, you know, I think I cut these out of Bumblebee. And I found the easiest way to put these on is to take a glue dot. So we'll just stick a glue dot down there at the end. And let's just kind of stick that 
down in there like so. Now again, be conscious of the edge of your cardstock or the fold. Keep it all in there. So we'll take that one. Um, let's see, let's come down that way. There we go. So there is our first completed card. Now let's bring back the one that I colored. And I had this one almost all done. We're just gonna glue this part on. But notice the difference here. I have the exact same colors, okay? My cardstock's the same colors, it's cut the same. Put that together. The only difference between the two is I colored this with my Stampin' Blends. And you can see it has a little bit of white, gives it a little bit different look. So if you're a person that likes to color, there's an option for you. And then I did pre-cut a piece for the inside here with the May the Magic and Wonder greeting. Okay, all the stamps I'm using, whoops, that slid on me, didn't it? All of the stamps I'm using, all the greetings and everything are from our poinsettia stamp set. And so we layered that on. Now I don't always layer for the inside. Sometimes I just put a piece of white, but I thought this car was kind of, elegant looking. I, I like the red on the inside as well. So there are two cards. Now, now I told you we're going to make two other ones because I just want to show you again different ways to use the stamp set. Now for this one I used Bumblebee. Okay that's the color I used here and again I stamped these images and cut them out but on the top one and can you see here there's a little bit of color on there and there's a little bit of color on the leaves as well. You can see on our stamp set, we have these little pieces to color them in. So I stamped it off, okay, pear pizzazz ink, but then pear pizzazz for that inside too, but I stamped off on scrap paper first to make it lighter because I wanted it real subtle on there. So we went ahead and did that. I've put that together already. And then for the berries, there's this piece that stamps inside of it as well. Now the berries on this first one, because I really wanted them nice and bold, I did use the blends. So here we are ready to put this one together. And this time we're gonna use a little bit different ribbon. Instead of linen thread, I'm gonna use some gingham. And you'll see how this gives it just a completely different look. So let's go ahead and stick that on there. And then we're going to use this piece. Now this, because I struggle tying bows and anything that's thicker than linen thread, what we're going to do is just go ahead and tie a knot. I always say knots are kind of my, my cheater bows. If you can't tie a bow, tie a knot. So we did one loop of it, use my finger to hold that down, and then we'll do the other. Tie that nice little knot there, and then we can just trim that up like so and then we can go ahead and I'm not going to do this on video because again I know you guys don't like to watch like super long on and on so these pieces would all go together to put this card together just like we did the other ones now as a reminder there's a link down in the description of the video to the blog post and I will put this together and I will have pictures of it over on the blog post but look at just how different the look is. Same layout, same card, um, just by using different colors and different colors of ink and paper. Okay, final card. You want an elegant look out of this poinsettia? Now for this one, this is a little hidden gem here. Let me see if I can find it for you. In the holiday catalog on page 22, they have this beautiful red and green foil sheets and it makes the most beautiful poinsettia. Look at that. Now for this one, there was no stamping, but what I did is I took my dies and as you can see, there's two pieces. So this one cuts out and then the middle one gives you the embossing on there. So you can see, I, I hope it's picking it up, um, how pretty that is. Now a little tip, um, I did not do it personally because I don't have any fingernail polish in my house, but this is a little tricky to find out which way these goes because there is a certain way they go together. You can see on all of these. So a tip I have for you that 
I've heard from some other people is they've taken some fingernail polish and put like a little dab there and a little dab there. Just pick one of the leaves to do that on. I tried to do it with a Sharpie marker and it wiped off. So that fingernail polish will do that. And then that way, when you go to cut out of that foil, you can line them up and you don't have to, every time like I did, try to spin them around to figure out which way they go together. So we're gonna go ahead and put this card together as well. Um, I just have a piece of gold foil for underneath. I've embossed Merry Christmas in gold. So again, exact same card layout, but look at how elegant that is with all of these beautiful foils. So like, like so, and then instead of using linen thread or gingham, I'm gonna just use a piece of this gold edged ribbon and I tied a bow and we're gonna just stick it down with a glue dot like so. And there's our elegant one. Now again, I'll finish putting this together off camera and pictures will be on that blog post. So there we go, that one's kind of falling apart. But I hope you enjoyed this video just to show all the different ways that you can use the poinsettia stamps with the die. So you can stamp in color or stamp on colored cardstock. Uh, we're just stamped and cut out and then just the embossing on that. So as always, if you have questions, make sure to reach out to me, leave me a comment, send me an email. And again, hop over to the website to see the finished product, a list of everything you need to make these. So if you'd like to make this for your Christmas card this year, I'll make it real easy for you to place an order for any products that you use. And if you do that, don't forget about my frequent shopper rewards. I love to send my customers free stamp sets and you can earn them when you shop with me. So you can check that out over on that website as well. So until I stamp with you again, have a stamp happy day.